Hey guys, welcome to the homestead. So today we're going to talk about my ham radio setup and my grounding setup specifically on why I'm doing it the way I'm doing it in order to prevent lightning strikes. Uh, before we get started, just know that we are starting a series on radios over at our Patreon, patreon.com slash American Homestead, where we're helping families who just want to get started and having some basic communications and maybe some more advanced communications and then explaining why I'm using the radios that I have for the reasons I'm using them, giving more of a philosophy of use. So if you're interested in that, you can head over to patreon.com slash an American homestead link is in the description below. But let's go ahead and get into why I have my grounding set up, uh, set up the way I do. So about 12 years ago, there was a guy named Tinker John. He's on YouTube and he seems like a really nice guy. And he did a video <laughs> showing everyone how his very tall antenna uh, is kind of maybe similar to the one I have uh, was basically obliterated by a lightning strike and not only did it take out about three-fourths of his ham shack and in his radios and equipment that he had it also took out a large portion of the electronics in his home all of his TVs um, you know satellite uh, all kinds of stuff electronics that he had in his home and so it cost him thousands upon thousands of dollars worth of damage. And as he went through the video, it was apparent to, if you were paying attention, that he really didn't have any ground protection. He didn't have any ground protection. He didn't have any lightning arresters. All he had was ground radials protecting his system, which really is not much of a grounding at all. And then the key, the kicker was, he unplugged his antenna from whatever grounding system we had, which wasn't much, if anything. And that just basically allowed that antenna to be in a tractor for lightning. And by, I mean, the, 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 the antenna was just, you know, off in his yard, you know, next to his house. And so that lightning strike was devastating. And I saw that and a lightning strike really is something that scares me to death. Okay. Because we have, we're, we're off grid Everything's run on solar. We have um, all-in-one inverters here. We have all kinds of electronics that we use for our off-grid system to be able to collect energy from the sun or even wind turbines. I'll go ahead and flip this around real quick. See the wind turbine up there spinning. I'm out here by my woodshed. So we've got a lot of things that are used here to generate power and a lightning strike would absolutely be devastating. So... I wanted to make sure that I grounded my system well. I want to be able to have these communications. I want to be able to have the ham radios. It's always been, I've, I've had a ham license since 2009. Um, and I just recently also added that to my uh, G, a GMRS license added to that. But like, I've, I've been involved in with this and I've always wanted to be able to have a radio communication set up. But I want it to be safe. I want it to make sure that I'm not going to put other, other things here on the homestead in jeopardy that I absolutely need to function on a day-to-day -day basis. So let me walk you over. I will show you my grounding setup. I'll show you my antennas. And then we'll do some other videos talking about how I'm powering my system later on down the road. But let's show you the grounding system today. Here's the side of my house. And I have two antennas. This one here is a double J-pole. And this one here is the A99. A lot of you guys are probably familiar with this one. It's a very common antenna for HF and CB. And so that I'm using it for CB. This one I'm using for VHF and UHF. And everything is working fantastic. I've been able to, to make a lot of contacts with both of these. And so, and on this one, because I'm at such high elevation here in the Ozarks, sitting at about 2,300 feet, this thing, I've been able to listen from coast to coast. I can pick up people in New York. I can pick up people all the way in the West Coast, the Mojave Desert. I can pick up people down in Mexico. Um, I'm getting all kinds of uh, listening ability with this now because I'm only running a basic CB. I only have four watts of power, so I can't reach out very far, you know, other than local. But uh, there, there's the antennas, and I'm running the wires down into here, and this is my grounding box. I'll put the link below of where I got this. They sell outstanding products, and most of the accessories I got from uh, that company. And so they produced this box, and inside I have basically a copper plate, that they put together. I have two Morgan arresters. Uh, the guy, Tinker John, who I mentioned in that video, had no lightning arresters on his system. Um, he just basically was running the antenna into the house 
and he, he would disconnect things, but you don't want to be able to do that. You want to be able to send whatever static electricity or, or static buildup, because we get a lot of wind up here, and that can generate uh, some sort of a static electricity field, and you want to be able to discharge that. And that's what these things do. When they get that sense of a buildup, these will send these to ground, and they're connected to that copper plate, which is connected to uh, this uh, strap here, copper strap here, and this goes all the way down to an eight foot ground rod connected here. So everything is constantly being discharged. You do not want to disconnect your <laughs> your antennas when a storm comes. You can, dis you can disconnect them on the inside if you want to, that's fine. But if there's any sort of buildup, you want to send that to ground. Uh, this here, this is a ground also. that comes up to my metal roof, which is also grounded to this plate which is connected to the strap which is connected to that eight foot ground rod now the one thing i still have to do that i have not done yet is about 16 foot away which is recommended okay i'm following code for all you people out there at least that's what they say i have another ground rod here so this is another eight foot ground rod and what i'm going to do is i'm going to bond this one to the other one that i just showed you and so I'll, I'll, I'll dig down a little bit and I'll put a connector down there and I'll run a six gauge wire, six gauge solid copper from this one to the other one that I just showed you. And that's called bonding, okay? When you connect by wire this ground rod to the other ground rod. And so that will give two ground rods, eight foot ground rods and a buried six gauge wire that connects to this one. And I actually have another ground rod. I'll show you that in a second. Now I'm on the other side of the house right now and right above this roof is all of my solar panels. And all my solar panels are connected to a wire that comes down here, down here, and to this ground rod. So I don't have, I'm not connected to the grid. Okay, that is my grid. And so my incoming to my home is this ground rod. So everything is basically grounded. Now also, I'm living in a manufactured home. Okay, it's built on steel frame. And those steel frames are also grounded. There are four screw type anchors that hold that system to the ground uh, with strapping, metal strapping. And so that's also, I would consider that also a ground. Uh, you have four, uh, four three foot screw anchors uh, that hold the entire house via the metal frame to the ground. Now, back to the box here, there's one more component that I want to point out to you, and that's this little wire that comes in here to this, this copper plate. Let's take you to the inside, and I'll show you what I've got for grounding on the inside at my shack. Okay, so I'm in my studio. This is where I record all my videos on the inside. All these curtains are noise-canceling curtains, and then there's where all the studio recording happens, right there. But over here, where the radios are, I've got all my chassis that are grounded to a ground bar. And that ground bar sits right there, and each one connects to one of these things here. See that? Each chassis connects to that. And then this right here goes up, 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 up. And that is the entrance to the box that you saw on the other side of the wall on the outside. And then I have it stuffed with some foam to keep any critters that might find their way in there, which I doubt because it's sealed. But anyway, if they did, that keeps them out. And this ground goes right to that copper plate which then sends any buildup static electricity whatever to ground so that's my grounding setup and I, i'm i'm hoping that this is enough when i especially after i do my my final bonding to that other ground rod this will be enough to basically protect me from lightning strikes and hopefully I won't, get, I won't get lightning strikes at all because if things are properly grounded, lightning has no interest in what you're doing. Uh, so um, if you have suggestions, please leave them below. I'd love to hear them, but I'm trying my best to make sure that I have everything properly grounded and, and that everything is safe. And uh, so, but again, I'm open to suggestions. So a real quick mention, and we'll do videos on this coming up, uh, how am I powering these? These are all DC units, DC powered units, and I'm using the Oopies solar generator. I'll do some more um, videos on this. This is absolutely fantastic. It's got DC hookups right here, and I'll show you how I've got that stuff set up too. Uh, these little things come in absolutely handy, uh, the 5.5 millimeter connectors, and they were great with this. So you can get a solar generator, which are, which is helpful for so many other things like 
a backup power source for like a freezer if your power went out. Uh, this does absolutely fantastic for that. It easily charges with my solar panels that I have set up. I have an extra set of solar panels that are just for my solar generators that I use on a regular basis. And it just it's an absolutely fantastic setup for when it comes to ham radio communication. So stay tuned and I'll do some more videos on that coming up here soon. So there you go. There's my grounding tour. Let me know what you think below. Suggestions, absolutely welcome because I want to make sure I'm doing things right, doing things safe. If you have any improvements or suggestions you'd like to make, leave them in the comments below. Um, also, make sure you check out our merchandise over at teespring.com. You can find our best-selling shirt, Stupid Should Hurt. If we had more hurt in this world, we'd have an awful, awful lot less stupid. And not grounding your stuff correctly can absolutely hurt. So, <laughs> Ignorance is temporary. Stupid is forever. So just keep that in mind as well. Anyway, um, hey, check out also our patreon.com. Uh, slash in American Homestead. We are beginning a new series over there for it comes to radios, obviously giving a lot of my philosophy of use, why I'm doing things the way I'm doing them, what's the whole purpose. I'm looking at this with collapse in mind, okay? Preparedness in mind. This is not a hobby for me. Radios are not a hobby for me. I do enjoy working with them and tinkering with them and making contacts even. But my main focus is because I believe this country is headed for hard times in the future and I want to make sure that I can have a way to communicate or better yet, listen to what's going on in the world after it all goes to poop. <laughs> so... Uh, leave a comment below and check out our series over at AmericanHomestead.com or Patreon.com slash AmericanHomestead where we're helping families get started on just some basics. Recommendations on how to get a license, recommendations on some basic radios where the learning can begin, and all of that. So we've got a lot of videos coming for that. So check it out in the link below. Link in the description. All right, guys. See you next time in the Homestead. Bye. Have you ever gone to a health food store and seen all those small bottles of probiotics in your cooler section? Man, can they be pricey. Are you really getting all you need to improve your gut health from those expensive bottles? How viable are they? Most of those products claim to give you between 8 and 15 strains of gut healthy healing bacteria. Think of each strain of bacteria as a different factory in your gut. Each factory is responsible for breaking down that food in its own way. The more factories you have, the more the food is broken down and the easier the food is absorbed and digested by the body. A 2018 study published by the National Library of Medicine shows that one fermented head of cabbage can produce up to 114 strains of beneficial bacteria. That's a lot more food factories than you're getting from that expensive pill bottle. And that's just cabbage. Imagine the probiotics when you add garlic, onions, pepper, and more to that ferment. PerfectPickler.com and its home fermentation kits provide you with everything you need to get started making your own gut healthy food factories from the comfort of your own kitchen. PerfectPickler.com even provides a jam-packed recipe book with many of our kits. Visit PerfectPickler.com and start fermenting your own veggies to begin your journey to better gut health. That's PerfectPickler.com. Hey guys, did you know you can become a patron of an American homestead? They get access to private videos and we send them gifts from the homestead that we make here on the homestead. And we also enter our patrons into special giveaways that are only available to them. And before you go, please check out these other great videos. Go ahead, click. Oh wait. <laughs>